Next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the Wrangler. Now we do have two different options that are available. So we've either got the Uconnect 4 screen, which is a seven inch, or we've got this one, which is the Uconnect 4C, which is an 8.4 inch that also features factory navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. So if you're in that seven inch screen, just go in knowing you don't have the option for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but you at least will have some other base controls versus this one, we've got a ton of other options that are available. So I'm gonna walk you through everything, but let's dive into it, let's have some fun. So first thing to note, we could see right along the very top there, what's going on with our temperature. So we can see if it's different driver, passenger side, whatever the case may be, we can easily adjust that one out from there. So that's easily done right down through the center stack there. So you can see we've got our climate control settings. But along the very top that does adjust, we've got our outside temperature there, and we've got what current time it is. Now, if we wanted to, we could also press the time there if we want to adjust our clock settings. We can also adjust it through our settings button along the very bottom right hand side. But this I'm going to say is going to be the home screen, but it's going to be just our base media, so our audio tab there. So the 2023 Wrangler is still on the old Uconnect 4 4C system. It hasn't been upgraded to the Uconnect 5 as of yet, but let's go through. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. Along the very top, you can see we've got our either AM, FM, Sirius XM preset, so we can easily adjust what, what source we're using there. We can also press select source if we wanted to change out to an auxiliary cable, so that 3.5 mil jack or we can also go to USB. So if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would also show up as an available option there, which is amazing. But you can see there, we've got AM, FM, etc. If we wanted to, we could tune to whatever station we want to, and then we just press and hold. And you can see there, it's saved it in. So if we wanna save presets, it's done very easily that way. We can hot button press if we wanna get into our little map there again, or just hide. We've got our HD radio. We can browse all of our available presets there as well. So we can see what stations we've saved in. If you're not a fan of a station you've saved, you just, just, you just delete it, which is great. I love that we've got that flexibility. But you can see there we've got 12 individual presets. And I did mention it's going to be different for AM, FM, Sirius XM, et cetera. So we've got all of our different presets that are available there. Slightly different on the Sirius XM, which we'll get to in a second. But we can tune this way. We can tune by typing in the station this way if we want to. There's a voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so we can also tune to a station Cancel. that way. And we've also got our tuning rocker down here. So crazy the amount of ways we can tune it. We can push audio here in order to get to some audio settings, which I'll get to in just a moment. We can, I did mention select source, but when we go into Sirius XM, we've got a few other options. So we've got our replay, we've got our favorite. So if a song comes on that you love, you can add in the artist or the song if you want to, which is great. And what that means is when the vehicle recognizes that either the artist or the song is playing, it's gonna notify you and let you know, which is amazing. We can replay current song as well. I didn't mention we can tune that way. Now, we jump into our audio settings and we've got a series of other ones. So we've got our balance fade, so we can easily adjust out there if we want to. We've got our equalizer, so we can adjust what's going on with our bass, mid-range, and treble. I find that this is usually a pretty good setup. Oh yeah, some smooth yes, there we go. But it's nice we've got that available as an option. Speed adjusted volume. So because we're in the Wrangler, it can get a little bit noisy, especially with the top down. But what's going to happen with our speed adjusted volume, it's automatically gonna adjust the speed as necessary. We've got our volume offset and we can also auto play when a USB device is first connected to the vehicle. Moving back out, that's the basics of our audio. Like it's very, very straightforward to be able to adjust because we're in Sirius XM, we can now see all of our channels. We can do a genre game instead. We've got all of our different presets that are available. We've got our favorites that we've selected for favorites. We've got our alert settings, so whether or not we want alerts when our artist comes on. We've got our game zone, so we can select what games are playing and our featured list. So classics, discovery, etc. So a ton of different options that are available looking at audio. But next up, moving into our climate control settings. So we've got a series of different climate control settings down the screen, so right underneath the screen there. But we've also got some audio, or some, I should say, climate control settings available here. We've got our max AC, air conditioning, we can circulate, we've got our auto mode, front and rear defrosters, and then we could, right through the screen, adjust what's going on there, or we can do it down below as well. So we've got some options there. 
Now one thing, we've got this little sync button. So if our driver passenger side is different, if we hit sync, it's going to default us to whatever the driver side is. We can have it change to our windshield face feet, some sort of combination, which is a button we can also access there as well. So we've got that option. Same idea, we can adjust what's going on with our fan speed, adjusting there and things like that. We can turn the whole system off. But we move into our controls and the controls that you see here are going to depend on which model of the Wrangler you have and which features you have as available as an option because I mean obviously if you didn't have a heated steering wheel this wouldn't show up but it is nice that we can adjust that as necessary turn on our heated seat for both the driver and for the passenger side so you can see there it does let us know what's going on with each seat and with our wheel. We can toggle off the auto dimming rear view mirror we can show our backup camera there as well. And then if we had the integrated front camera, we would also be able to see that front camera right through the screen. But one thing I love is just how beautiful and clear this screen is. Like this is really, really nice. I love it. That's great. So we've got that available as an option there. And we can also jump into some more advanced settings, which we'll get to when we get into our settings screen down below or to the side there. So we've got our climate, we've got our controls, we've got our app screen now. And then app screen, I essentially want you to think of that like more or less every available option inside the vehicle just laid out differently. So we've got all of our Uconnect apps. So we've got our travel link, projection manager for phones, our hotspot, backup camera, off-road pages is a really cool one. Let's kind of play with that one for a second because that's neat. Now the off-road pages, not standard across the entire vehicle lineup, but it is cool that it is there. So it takes a second or so for it to load up. You can see there current version numbers, but we can see what's going on with our steering angle as we go. We can also see what's going on with our transfer case. So are we in too high, four high, four low, et cetera. We can see our current GPS coordinates and our altitude. So if you're going off-roading and you've gotten lost, you could call emergency services with your GPS location if you need it. You can see all of our different gauges, which yeah, we could see it through the cluster screen, but it is amazing that it's all laid out here for us. Really useful when you're off-roading Equally as impressive, we've got our pitch and roll. So we can see what's going on there as well. You're going over rocks, whatever the case may be. We can see exactly what's going on. So it's really, really cool. We've got that available as an option there. So like I said, offer a page is not standard, but it is really cool. We've got that available as an option. And we do have all different sorts of options there across the board. We could also just kind of do a drag and drop if we wanted to replace different things, which I mean, I love it. We can adjust it right on screen here, as you saw there. So if you want it in a different spot, we could do that. We could drag any of these apps down here. So if you don't care about certain ones, we can do a drag and drop in order to adjust, like getting rid of the controls, adding an off-road pages down here instead. So you saw there, it's just a simple press and hold, and we can kind of adjust and drop them out as necessary. And that's even for adjusting the order of all of these different buttons down there. So really, really cool. We've got the flexibility to be able to do that. Next up is our navigation. So we do have factory navigation inside of this one. And as you can see there, we've got our pinch to zoom and it's actually fairly responsive. The map is a little bit dated looking, but it is cool that we've at least got factory navigation available here as an option. You can see there switching up between all of our different modes. We can also zoom in and out as necessary this way if we want to. Really, really nice. We can exit out there if we want, very simply. Pushing the menu button here also lets us go between a few options. So we can do our 2D, we can go full screen if we want to. We can exit out of full screen. We can go into our menu in order to be able to search this way. So I didn't mention, we could press the voice command prompt if we wanted to go Jeez. that way. We could also just start typing in an address this way, which is really nice. We can exit out that way. We can search by GPS coordinates. We can call it, we can look at emergency services, check out our information to figure out where we are. So we can see exactly where we are there, our GPS data as well. Backing out, we can see our country, our country information, home and work addresses are really useful because if we've got that set up, one of the benefits there is we can push the voice command prompt and say, Cancel. navigate home, navigate to work. And it's going to navigate to the addresses we have saved here. So it is nice that we've got that available as an option. Where to, we can search for different point of interest icons. We want to go to different restaurants and things like that. We've got that flexibility. And we just hit route two. Oh, actually, before I do that. So we've got places nearby, business information. If our phone was connected, we could call. And we can also save it as a favorite destination. But if we go route two, it gives us our route in order to get there. If there are alternative routes available, it'll also show us. We can go fastest, shortest, most eco-friendly, all the same, which is why we have no differences there. 
and we hit Please go. Please proceed to the highlighted route. So you can see there, we're on our way. So it's really straightforward there. We can kind of do a drag there, look at map views again in order to change it as we go. We press back, we've got our main settings there. We can push this to go full screen instead. We can mute guidance, we can stop, we can pause, look at settings. So if we stop, yes, and the guidance is stopped there. So it's really straightforward. Now, if we go to our menu again, we can go where to, search. We've got our recent addresses now, and we've recently been there. So we can do that. Please proceed to the highlight. If we wanted to restart again, so it's really cool. Now, it is nice as well because inside of our cluster screen, it also is going to show, so uh, proceed to root, so essentially like a turn-by-turn -turn direction right in the cluster screen when we get the 7-inch digital. But, I mean, you saw there, really straightforward to use. We push this, we've got some navigation settings. So, we've got our map set up, which, I mean, we saw this earlier. We can adjust what view we've got. Our map appearance, how do we want that showing up? Do we want to display our current street, city? For our destination, do we want to have our time of arrival, how much time we have remaining, or what our total distance is that's remaining? Our auto zoom, so as we get closer to our destination, do we want the vehicle to automatically zoom in or out as necessary? We've got our vehicle icon, oh that's cool. So we can kind of adjust out what we want our icon, oh that's really neat, what we want our icon to look like, that's kind of cool. We've also got our point of interest icons, our categories, if we want to show all of these different options here. We've got our traffic info, we've got our speed flow, we've got our 3D city, terrain, park areas, railroad cities, rivers, etc. So we've got the flexibility of really adjusting the map and making it your own, which, I mean, I love it. And we've got a series of other different settings, but I mean, for the map by itself, these are going to be all of our different settings that are available. But I mean, as you see there, quite a few options, which is nice. Push the nav button again in order to get back to the main nav screen as well. So quite a few different options there. But I mean, it is nice that it's so simple to use this all at the same time. And then we could jump out of there if we wanted to. But that's how you use factory navigation inside of this thing. Next up, we've got the option to add a phone. And as you can see there, currently no phones connected. So what I'm going to do is, yes, let's add a phone. And we're waiting for it. So we've got Uconnect showing up. Hey, pin numbers match up, so pair and yes. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit don't allow for now. And perfect, there we go. And it does tell us there. So we've got the iPhone connected, which means that if we press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, it's going to activate our Siri assistant for us there as well, which is great. So we do have that option available. We could see recent contacts, keypads, things like that. Along the very top, we could see our battery level, current connection status. We can reply with text messages as we're driving as well, which is great. So it is really straightforward. We can hit phone there to go back to the main screen, navigate through. We can look at our pairing options. So our phone's gonna pop up in our cluster screen. We can enter do not disturb, look at all of our paired phones, and then we can go to our projection manager. So again, same thing, we go to paired, and it's gonna also give us the option of going paired audio or projection manager. But if we look here, we've got some sub options. So we can disconnect, make it our favorite, or we can delete it. So I'm gonna leave this thing connected and show you what happens if we have multiple phones connected in a second. But we can also pair this up for audio there as well. And then we've got our projection manager. So projection manager for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. So that's one of the cool things is that this screen also does support Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Because we're in the Uconnect 4C, it still is a wired connection. So all we're gonna do, insert our USB cable. Opposite end of the cable, we're just plugging ourselves in. And watch this. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. Otherwise, when we lock, CarPlay just wouldn't work. But as you see there, it's working. And that was super quick to pull, to pull up. And I mean, it is really nice. Like it is super clear inside of this and really responsive, which is great. I love that. So we're on the main screen here. We've got whatever map application was last opened. So watch this, it's currently showing Waze. But if we go to, uh, let's go Apple Maps, it's gonna default to Apple Maps instead. We can search, look at destinations, we can change 2D, 3D, head up, etc. Pushing this button brings us back to our main screen there. And then we push Waze and it just defaults us to Waze. We can search for addresses, use our voice command prompt. We can adjust the screen out this way. 
And then very similar, so we can increase, decrease. This way we don't have pinch to zoom capabilities, unfortunately. And that's the same for all map applications, whether that's Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever the case may be. We do have to hit this in order to zoom in, out, etc. So something to think about there. We do have to zoom in and out that way. We don't have the pinch to zoom at all on this thing. But I mean, it's nice. We've got our podcast there so we can listen, browse, look at our library as well. Jump back home into our audiobooks and so many other things. Now, not every app is going to work inside of Apple CarPlay, but there is a pretty extensive list that is available. And then one really cool thing about CarPlay is that we could adjust it. So if we go to our general settings, we go to CarPlay, we look for a vehicle, so you connect. We can forget the car. We can disallow CarPlay while the phone is locked. And then we can also customize it. So if we customize, you can see there, we could adjust. Actually, let me do this, watch this, boom. And if you want podcasts up there as well, so we can easily adjust these things out as necessary. If you delete something, it removes it from the screen completely, but it does save the app. And if you've done too much, like let's say if you've deleted one too many things, you're like, oh, this is crazy. All you're gonna do is hit reset, reset home screen, and it's just gonna bring you back to your factory default there instead. So really straightforward. You can see there we've got our map, we've got our gas parking, etc. We've got our podcast, we've got our Oh, that's cool. We've also got our calendar showing up there as well and a series of other options. Now, in order to get back home, we could just go to any of these other buttons. We hit our settings along the bottom. We can go to our Uconnect apps there instead. And then if we go into, ooh, I want to go to Projection Manager. So you can see there we're currently connected. We can disconnect CarPlay as well. So let's say if you don't want CarPlay and you just want to use our regular phone, that's how you're doing it. So you're just disabling there and you're set to go. Next up, setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, you just have to get to your phone there. And we just want to get to paired phones. So if we were, let's say, on any other screen, we're on our regular phone, we can just hit pairing, paired phones, and we're there. And we just want to get into our add device. So we're just going to hit add device there. On our other phone, we're just going to pull up Bluetooth. And we've got Uconnect showing up. Pin numbers match up. And I mean, you can see there, we're connected. Now, I'm gonna say no to contacts and messages, but as you can see there, do I wanna make it my favorite? I'm gonna say no for now and watch this. We go inside here and we can also make it a favorite. So one of the benefits there is who gets connection priority? So if both phones are in the vehicle, who's gonna get connected to first? And that's the same for phone as well as for audio. So if you wanna have your iPhone connected for audio, and then your phone connected for your phone calls, you've got the flexibility to be able to do that as well, which is fantastic. But you can see there we're connected. So if we jump back into our phone now, you can see I'm connected to the Galaxy. We can see our battery, current connection, do not disturb mode, things like that. We can jump into pairing. We can jump back in here. If we wanted to be able to delete things and then projection manager currently just connected, well, previously connected, I should say, to CarPlay, but setting up Android Auto is literally the exact same process. So we're going to take our USB cable, plug ourselves into that USB port. Opposite end, we're just plugging ourselves in and unlock. We want to go next and we're just waiting for this to kind of do its thing. So, I mean, three, two, one, and we are fully connected there, which is amazing. You can see we've got our settings, and this is the same on the Apple side too. So we've got settings, root options. We've got our podcast along the bottom. We can see what's currently going on with our media suggestions. If we have any active notifications, we can also have our Google Assistant showing up there, or we can do a press and hold on the steering wheel to have our Google Assistant go that way. So it is nice, we've got that as an option. Hopping inside here, we've also got our Google Maps, we've got podcasts, we've got our music and things like that. So one thing, this phone does have Waze installed on it, but I mean, as you can see there, I only have the option for Google Maps. So as of right now, we don't have Waze connectivity here as of yet. Like, fingers crossed it happens soon, but as of right now, 4C, you're, uh, you connect 4C, you're not getting um, Waze inside of this thing. And certain apps will work through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Other ones, you're gonna have to be physically connected or over Bluetooth in order to listen. So streaming certain things, you'll have to be connected over Bluetooth instead. But I mean, you saw there, really easy to set it up. We go into our settings if we want to, we can go into our apps, projection manager, and you can see we've got both of them connected now. I can just simply disconnect there if I want to. 
And I mean, three, two, one, the phone is disconnected. For Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, we've got both paired devices still. So deleting a device, I mean, you saw it earlier, we've got our options there. We can delete, yes, delete, yes, boom. And it's fully deleted from our paired phones. And we can also delete it now from our projection manager. All we need to do is click, forget, click, forget, and it's deleted everything right from the vehicle here, which is fantastic. But that's how you set up either an Android or an iPhone device inside of the Uconnect 4 screen. All right, so that's, well, everything you need to know about setting up a phone. You can see there I've deleted the phone, so nothing connected. And now we've got some advanced settings. So language, we can change between either English, French, or Spanish. We can change out our display as well. So as of right now, a lot of these things are grayed out and that's because we're in auto mode. So if we go manual, we can also adjust a few other things as well. So auto, manual, etc. We can also select different themes. So if you like the look of a different theme, we can play around with this a little bit, but I mean, that is kind of cool. That is really cool. We can kind of customize the theme a little bit. So nice little skins there that are available. Series of different options available there. Touch screen beeps, we can turn off. We've got our control timeout. We've got our turn by turn directions also showing up in our cluster screen. So we can disable that if we want to. We can have our phone pop-ups showing up. So any messages we get in that cluster screen as well. And then our Sirius XM weather alerts. And that's the basics of the display. Units, we can also go US metric or custom. So do we want kilometers or miles? Fuel consumption, do we want to have it? Miles per gallon, liters per hundred, etc. Tire pressure. Let's go PSI, and do we want Celsius or Fahrenheit for our temperature? We've got our, our voice as well. So do we want either a brief or detailed response? So when we push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so you can see there we've got our command prompt. This is the command Cancel. list. So do you want the command list always showing with help or never showing up? And then whenever we do things like change songs, radio stations, etc., do we want to have a detailed or brief? So brief essentially is more like an advanced mode. From there, we've got our clock, which you saw there, we could press the clock button there in order to change clock settings, or we just get into it from settings and clock. We can sync it with GPS, or we can manually adjust it if we want to. We can show time in the status bar along the very top, yes, no, etc. Moving back, we've got our camera now. So we've got our backup camera delay. So when we've got our backup camera going, when we go to drive forward, the delay means that it's gonna stay on for a few seconds. We've got our guidelines there. So whether or not we want the guidelines showing up or not is going to be a matter of preference. And then we've got our fixed camera guidelines there. So fixed versus active are two different ones. So fixed means that it's going to stay fixed as we turn the wheel versus our active. As we go to turn, you can see there it's going to adjust it out on the fly there, which is great. So it's I, honestly, I do recommend the active rather than the fixed. It's just an easier system, I believe, I think personally. And from there, we've also got safety and driving assistance. We've got our hill start assist. We've got our mirrors and wipers there as well as our lights. So lights, headlight delay. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do we want the light staying on for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, or just turning off automatically? When we approach with our key fob on us, do we want the headlights to illuminate? Yes, no. Do we want to activate our wipers, our headlights with our wipers? And then we've also got our flashlights. So as we go to lock the vehicle, do we want our exterior lights flashing there? Doors and locks. Do we want the doors to automatically lock as we drive away? Automatically unlock. Do we want to flash our lights? Do we want to sound our horn? Do we want to sound our horn with our remote start? And then passive entry. So as long as we've got the key fob on us, we've got that little button on the driver's door we can push in order to be able to get inside. And from there, we've got our seats and comfort. So we've got the option of turning on our heated seats and steering wheel when we remote start, when we start all the time, or do we never want that to automatically come on? We've also got our auxiliary switches. So we've got, oh, that's really cool. So as we power up all of our auxiliary switches there, we can have it for latching or momentary as well for a battery or ignition source. That is really cool. So if we want floodlights to come on with our battery or when we turn the vehicle on, we've got that flexibility. That is really cool. We've got four switches that are available right, in the, right uh, down the center stack there as well. Key off options there as well. So our headlight delay, et cetera. Series of audio settings, which we've already seen. Phone Bluetooth, which we've already seen all of these. Sirius XM setup. So we've already seen a few of these things, but we can tune to start. We can skip out certain channels. So if you're not a fan of listening to certain things, 
And we've also got our base subscription information. From there, we've also got our reset. So we can reset everything to our default, clear all personal data. And then we've also got our base inf system information for software licenses and things like that. So, I mean, you saw there, a lot of information, a lot of great features. Like I love the Uconnect app screen, jumping into things like the off-road pages and things like that, I love it. But lots of information, that's everything you need to know about the Uconnect 4C media screen inside of the Jeep Wrangler.